Welcome to another episode of Rough Talk VR, a weekly podcast with in-depth game reviews, exclusive developer interviews, and the latest MetaQuest and virtual reality news. We join our hosts, the father-son team of D. Scruffles and Stratus today, as they spend another episode breaking down and discussing the world of virtual reality. Hey, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR, joining you from a beautiful sunshiny day here in Massachusetts. Western Mass. Yeah, not always we get such part nice of the sun- state without the accent. Yeah, you know it's a a oncoming spring when we're excited about you know high fifties, but it's beautiful. Dude, the it's sun's out. Forty six, man. <laughs> it's just fucking great. I'm opening windows, but the sun's out. It's a beautiful day, and we're ready to podcast. We got yeah. Reggie in between us, a whole paper full of notes to talk about. It was a a good week of VR news, so let's go. And I mean to kick things off this week, we saw Into the Radius two. The studio behind it dropped an early access upcoming kind of teaser trailer that was all PC VR gameplay, but wow, it looked, it looked good. Into the Radius 1 was a really good game. It's a solo extraction game. You go in kind of like horror spooky themed, but it could be a lot to handle by yourself. I mean, it's a, (laughs) dude, just like like the way you said that. Because it's, it's true, you know, the environment itself could be a little nerve-wracking, to say the least. And then it's it's like Ghost of Tabor with really good gun mechanics and just extraction-based games can be kind of tough sometimes. But the sequel, Into the Radius 2, is going to be co-op. And that's a, I mean, no that's pun intended. a game intend- changer. Yeah, no Literally. pun intended. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. And it, it looks smooth. It looks great. Again, granted, the footage they showed was PC VR. It's going to be on the quest as well. Never seen footage of a company like putting out jank footage though. No, like, you always hey, go for check this out. You always go for the the best of the best in your footage. But I, I've been sold on the sequel since it was announced that it's going to have co op because I loved one. I went into it a bunch, but just wanted co op. I, I get I, it. I would have kept playing more, and I think a lot of players would have gone into it even more too, just because they could have somebody to show them around, teach them the game. <laughs> show you the ropes. Exactly. No, there seems to be some nice buzz about this. Yeah. So studios are wicked cool studio as well. Definitely got to get them on the podcast soon to to talk about it. Someday. Yeah. What I like is there's no doubt that they heard the reception from fans about wanting multiplayer and co-op. And there's no doubt in right my from mind. The start, yeah. It's probably ugh, it can't be the easiest thing to incorporate in a game this in depth. I mean, come on. Well, especially you make it for single player. You yeah. Know? So props to them for listening to the community and giving what, what the fans want. And I'm confident it's going to be one of the best releases this year. So if you're... That's a that's a statement. If you're unsold on... Have you in, tried it yet, sir? No, unfortunately. The, the sequel? No. But if you're unsold on it yet, go watch the trailer. I guarantee no, your trailer's, opinions... No, the trailer's damn good. Guarantee your opinions will, will start to change. And then another cool one. That I loved Beat Saber. They dropped a new song pack, hip hop pack. It's a hip hop pack. It is, and we did get access to it through the MetaQuest Creator Program. Yes, we did. Shout out to that. That was cool to be able to get some access to that. Which I'm grateful for because I, you love Beat Saber. I, yeah, I get all the DLCs anyways. Yeah. So I, either way, I was not going to not have it. If this was back in the days of pre being in the program. You would have just bought it the second the news dropped. Yeah. That was one of your games you have zero hesitation on, especially if it's artists you like, which this pack was pretty loaded, which I'll go over the songs that are included in a moment, but was really cool about this one. Dude, uncensored. First song pack in Beat Saber that's uncensored. And in some of the song choices, I almost feel like they made a point with it as well. well. All right, so what song did they open with? Which which Tupac song? Well, because it, it? Go, it goes into <clears throat> its alphabetical order. You know, well, so okay, if you're playing in alphabetic order, so the first song right out of the gate, well, loaded artist as well. We have Tupac, All Eyes on Me. We have Nicki Minaj, Anaconda. <laughs> we have Snoop Dogg, Gin and Juice. Great song. We have, I know, Tupac and <laughs> Sipping on Gin and Juice. Tupac was laid back. Tupac was probably my favorite in high school growing up for hip hop, for like classic hip hop artists. So to have him on, but then, you know, Snoop Dogg as well. Come on. And then <laughs> Snoop Dogg. We have Eminem, Godzilla featuring Juice World. We got Outcast, Hey Ya. We got Biggie Smalls with Hypnotize. 
We got Dr. Dre, nothing but a G thing. Ain't nothing but a G thing. We got Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the message. And we got Pop Smoke, the woo. (laughs) Featuring 50 Cent and Roddy Rich. So, I mean, dude, loaded soundtrack. Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Eminem. All uncensored. I know. All uncensored. And all eyes on me, I mean, they go pretty hard in that song with... um, Oh, Tupac? Ex- explicit language. Yeah. Same with Nicki Minaj Anaconda. So because it's in alphabetical different, order. Different ex- explicit. You buy this pack and you go down it in alphabetical order. Those are the first two you come across. Well, it's funny when like Eminem <laughs> can be put on a soundtrack and he'd be like one of the top three tamest on there for language. It might be Outcast and funny. Grandmaster. Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, yeah, Dude, those two are probably the most tame. But I get what you're saying. MCAT, Eminem is one of the the Grand more Master tamed. Flash is the the biggest OG on that list. Dude, they did a great job. Just to put it out there I with mean, the sound pound for pound, and then I'd probably say um, Dr. Dre for sure. You know, they've done sound and Snoop song packs before that are dedicated to one solo artist that you could argue is is stacked, like Lady Gaga pack and Rolling Stones. But for like diverse artists, this might be their most stacked pack. Yeah. Well, yeah, cuz I mean, yes they have the band packs and all that, but they all the other ones are d- usually a mix of like more the electronic. Correct. Electronic these are, arts, these are big freaking are, names. Yeah, there's not a bad one in the And to have them uncensored. And like I said, those dude, first two I, they I, go you know, I they, have mixed feelings. They really I don't. I I love it. I love the freedom of and I do, but I'm like you know, I just, I picture like the, the kid who's a little younger than he should be, you know, picking up mom or dad's headset and throwing Beat Saber on and being like, what's this? And then, you know, as a parent, you potentially are going to have some serious explaining to do. That's all I'm saying. The reality is, I I love the, I love the freedom though. So I'm not upset about that. I'm just thinking of the, ooh, for me. I don't listen to modern hip hop, so Ooh. I didn't really listen to Nicki Minaj, Anaconda before. But mm. I guarantee you, all little kids and teenagers going on this have heard that song before, because that's just modern, popular music. Who knows? It's not Taylor Swift. Yeah, but I love that it's uncensored. But they do have an yeah, option. I'm too. not. I hey, I'm not saying it shouldn't be. I'm just saying it was a little over the top. Well, and to to your point about handing your headset over to your kid. They have a setting that you can turn on in the settings Mm -hmm. that hides all the uncensored tracks. So if you have, I mean, hides all this, yeah, hides all the uncensored ones. So if you have the hip hop act and you go, all right, I'm going to pass it off to my kid. He'll play three songs. You can go flip that setting on and then he won't even see those songs on the the track list or she, you know, your child. So that's a good option that they included that as well. Sure. But I love that. I think this is their first one that's uncensored. So I love that they're, they're pushing the boundary now. They're going for it. Whatever. That's what people want. I saw the comments to it, like the reaction. Mm-hmm. And people were like, wow, I'll buy it just on the fact that it's uncensored now. Because <laughs> I think they were a little hesitant on it before. And then they really just went full 180. I, you know, I don't, I, I, get, I love it. I love the pack. I love the artists. Um, shit, even the ones, there's a few on there that I'm not like the biggest fan of. But it sounds like, great. And Beat Saber and VR. Well, they always do. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate the fact that they, they brought that artist in. That's actually something that you've said before is like when Beat Saber does music, it's going to be the best version of that song oh, that yeah. you've heard. Fuck them skinny bitches. <laughs> I'm learning new shit every day. I pictured the, isn't that what, isn't that what they say in Anaconda? Yeah. And it was funny too, because neither of us listened to that as like our playlist of no, music it's, it's when I'm on my up. phone. So you you played the track the the song back before me and you were like, dude, dude, we gotta do this song. Yeah, you gotta we, hear this. You shit. gotta hear it. You gotta hear it. And I, you were I, so I, excited to have to to play with me because we went right to multiplayer with it. Yeah. Ah, oh, dude, I was so excited when we got access to the the pack again for free through the the MetaQuest Creator program. That was freaking exciting. I was ready for this. I was like, I, we were messaging each other all day, like, ready for multiplayer, ready for some Tupac, ready for some gin and juice. Ready to ah, oh, dude. Gin and juice is so fun to play. I, I beat saber. I used to love that song. Mm-hmm. So it's like that was a great one. But for comical purposes, you were excited to show me Anaconda. Oh, dude, because I just I pictured like that. 
I pictured like the little kid waking mm-hmm. up in the morning and running downstairs to have cereal on his way to school and all the skinny bitches get out the Hey, club. mom, <laughs> fuck them skinny bitches. <laughs> you know, mom who like, you know, like a yoga mom and shit works an hour. Sorry like, if we sound biased. I'm, I'm sorry if the language is vulgar too. We're just repeating what we heard on Beat Saber. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> everything that's coming out of my mouth, I learned on Beat Saber. <laughs> this is not my fault. No, it's just, so it's like. That when when I heard that in the song, and I believe that's the exact quote from the song, I'd have to really I pull guess, up the lyrics. Pull up the lyrics. At least that's what my brain heard. Hey, you know what I will say too? It's not a song I would ever listen to because it's not my type of music. Yeah. But it's fun in Beat Saber. Listen to it now. Even even like though it's not my type of music, like playing it in multiplayer in Beat Saber, it was fun. I laughed. It was. Uh, dude, I would play it I'm again. Not, I would play it again in multiplayer. I'm I'll not say gonna that. lie. It has. It had one of the best feeling flows in the like the sound the song mapping. I like big butts. I like big. Butts. <laughs> I like big butts and I can. It just it had a great flow for it. It like felt like to the nanosecond <laughs> on time. So for real, hats off to to Beat Saber. Yeah, they I, they're one. making statements with this one, but their their choice of artists is like mm, perfect. Mm-hmm. They've got it's like having a full. Full keyboard in front of you. Yeah. I wonder what else they're... Ridiculous, dude. Working on... To, to score some of these uh, licensing, does it get Tupac, Biggie? Tupac, I Snoop think, Pac? would probably be or one Snoop, of the easier ones. To get Snoop Dogg? You're dealing with people who aren't him, but Snoop? I mean, Snoop's the shit, dude. I know, and, and Snoop loves games, so it's like, what are you going to do? Be like, hey, we want to put your music in there, and he's be like, nah, man. My point being is that they're getting really good... Doctor Dre, that's a good one. Eminem, last couple of years too. But yeah. Grandmaster Flash, I appreciate the respect because yeah. when I when I caught wind that they were doing the hip hop pack, I'm like, oh, I wonder is this going to be, be like all it? modern day mm-hmm. shit? And it's like, no, they went down the whole board, so it's like a walk through rap. But you could actually start with like Grandmaster Flash, yeah. and then it's like go the to the next next years up and next you know, decade. Correct. Follow it by the years, but to hear the innocence of grandmaster flash and rap which was you know parents were warning their their other parent friends like that is rap music and compared it's, but it's to like, anaconda you listen to what yeah dude different in role model big mm-hmm. time you know i don't know it's up i had fun fun as hell though so well you've mentioned you know beat saber their default their original soundtrack so to say is mostly electronic music yeah the game feels really fun with hip hop. Yeah, because hip hop's got good beats. Yeah, it feels really fun. So I <laughs> good hope, beats and good flows. You know? I hope that's something that they do again. As somebody that loves rock music and petitions for rock song packs and Beat Saber, I cannot lie. You know what these be, good hip hop songs like were good. <laughs> um, you know, it'd be like an awesome. Who doesn't? You know, an awesome flex, and I'd feel so bad for the people that have to map it in Beat Saber. Would be jazz. Hmm. That would be fun too, or like Frank Zappa, mm-hmm. where like the in, no two instruments are going to be doing the same shit. It's like, wow, how do you? The place, yep, you know, there's like, no, there's no. Your easy brain's going to tell you to swing, but even though it's there, you, you're going to swing any, uh, you know. No, so again, hats off to Beat Saber on what is yeah. arguably, in my my opinion, maybe their best song pack yet. They, I won't they, say that they crushed I'm, it. I'm happy to have it in a quiver of good licensed music. This was the as somebody that doesn't go crazy to Beat Saber. This now was give the, me Pink Floyd. This was the first one that when I heard about it, I was like itching for. I was real excited to go into. So yeah. I'm I hats it was off with to the them. Stones too. Yeah, the Rolling Stones is is up there as well. I love the Stones. Yeah. It's just that I don't want to be critical because you can't appease you can't have a perfect set list. I just remember I don't have I have all the tracks in front of me of the Stones one, but I remember there being a lot of songs that I wish were on it. Well that I weren't. That's but like, they have such a big roster of songs. Yeah, it's you know? like taking the Grateful Dead and being like, okay, you're going to get 12 mm-hmm. songs from a catalog of, you know, a thousand. <laughs> Can you imagine a Grateful Dead ones? It's like, especially if it's live performances. Yeah, that won't work. Fire, fire on the mouth. That won't work because when you 20 put minutes. It, when you put it to paper, it's like. 20 minutes. It's like, holy shit. They're really like. <laughs> When's this end? So when you put it to paper, they're not really on time and shit. <laughs> you know, it's just like this. Free flowing. Yeah, free flowing shit. But it would be funny just for length. I'd put it up there with jazz and be mm-hmm. pain in the ass to program. But no, I want to see, I want to see like Iron Maiden. I'd love to see an Iron Maiden pack. Those are all long ass songs. 
well, and then I'd I'd freaking love to see a Pink Floyd back. At this point, I'm pretty confident in their ability to secure licensing. So let's see what comes in the future. Yeah, there is no. It's probably already in the works. I mean, I hope so. Not probably. There's no doubt that they have more stuff in the works. That studio never stops. Mm-mm. You know, it was crazy for them to do one last thing before we move on to the other ones. At least on on my end, it was crazy for them to do this too because this is a Meta owned studio. Meta, is... yeah. Which probably helps them with the licensing side, but I mean, for them to go the whole uncensored route, that that was that was nice. I appreciate the freedom. Hey, I'm, this wasn't even on my list of notes and stuff, but just last night, this is Sunday, so just last night, Saturday, uh, Andrew Bosworth, the CTO of Meta, and Palmer Lucky had an interesting little back and forth. Old school wars on the internet, on baby. Twitter, where basically John John <laughs> Carmack, he he made a tweet, basically saying he wished he stuck up for Palmer Lucky. More during his outing because it was probably very, wasn't the thing to say because it was very political based. And then Palmer Lucky basically said thank you to John. Well, let me fast forward. So, so John Care, let me go backwards. John Caremack said, you know, I, I wish I stuck up for Palmer Lucky more. And in fact, Amanda Watson even quoted the tweet and chimed in. Amanda Watson, the creator of Airlink, that now is doing, geez, God only knows what she's got cooking up in the the oven. She chimed in and was like, yep, we all know, you know, the people that were there know what went down. Doesn't matter what other people try to, you know, rewrite history to, you know, those of us that were there, we we know what happened. And then Andrew Bosworth kind of started responding, saying, you know, things are kind of different than your time. You know, things aren't as like politically open, you know, people aren't like pushing politics and the, the work culture as much. And then Paul Merlucky and him started going back and forth. Paul Merlucky basically saying like, don't don't bullshit. You know, Bosworth was like, I, I don't really have any opinions on your outing. You know, I wasn't really too involved in that. And then Palmer Lucky was firing back, like, don't fucking bullshit. You know, you were you were involved in it, and it was just going back and forth for hours. They were basically like, Palmer Lucky was like, I'm down to air it out in the open whenever you say when. You know, so that's that was an interesting one to see go down. wonder if they did that sitting across from each other at a restaurant. Well, it got people talking. The whole, my whole Twitter feed was everybody like, dude, like how's your, how's your lobster over there, man? It's my, good. Check out. Hey, fuck you, brother. You know? Don't think I wasn't following <laughs> it all, all excited. Everybody was. Yeah. He went deep. I don't have the, like, like negative. When a, when a tweet goes terribly wrong is how you could look at that. Cause the. Yeah. I saw some people throwing a lot of shade at Andrew Bosworth. I don't really have negative feelings about him. I don't know the guy at one bit, you know, he, he it's got a tough job position. I I'm would. sure. Love to hear this story, and, and I know you want Palmer. Lucky well, that was going to be my next that. thing. You know, I don't have negative things to say about Palmer about uh, Andrew Bosworth. Some people have been liking to meme on him since this interaction because he got dunked on a bit by Palmer Lucky. But Palmer Lucky, Lucky's really good at good at words. He's good at arguing. You know, it's good at defense. But I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna mean meme on Bosworth. He's got a a tough position, and he is. I don't know. He is. Yeah. Exactly. But I will say I'm a big Palmer Lucky fan. And one of my dream episodes has always been to have Palmer Lucky on to kind of say his side of the story yeah. of, you know, let's take you back to being a teenager in a garage, take us through the creation of Oculus all the way into you getting pushed out for really just interesting political reasons. It was, it was quite, a, it, it's not something that's yeah, going to age well. I can't tell his story. So. Yeah. Nor do I, nor do I want to, because I'm probably going to make some, Inaccuracies. I don't, I don't need any beef with Palmer Lucky either. Well, there Fuck was a, that. there was a lot of bad media reporting at the time that he holds grudges about. You'll see him on Twitter sometimes be like, "Nope, you falsely reported this. Mm-hmm. You falsely reported this." That was even something that he was going back and forth with Bosworth, where Bos was saying he didn't have involvement, and he's like, "No, screw that. You're retweeting articles slandering me." And Palmer Lucky doesn't forget. So I don't want to tell his story at all because there's a lot. No, I'm not. I wasn't there. I can't tell it, but I know there's interest in it. Like no. a lot of interest. So, so I'd love to have him on just to take us through Jerry Ellsworth style. Like she did though, that, mm-hmm. you know, two hour, three hour podcast of just her whole story. I want to hear it from him. What went down from the creation all the way to, I guess the exodus, so to say, but that's a dream episode. I, yeah, no, I, I, Always wanted it just because I'd like to hear the uninterrupted mm-hmm. version of the story, not piecemealed and other people's. Or, I mean, you can figure it out yourself. Just go look at, do a lot of reading and research. But what better way to actually hear it than from the man himself? The best 
possible way that interview could go would be I introduce, we start, and then mm-hmm. you hear from me again in three hours. You know, just let him, don't say a word. Let him go loose, and I guess chime in if there's like some redirecting or some 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 clarification not... or some clarification about something. It's the last or, dude, I think you'd have to redirect. I know, not even redirection, more clarification or yeah. or you know. Think back to the Jerry Ellsworth episode. I think we said what 20, 20 words between both of us. Maybe <laughs> it was like doing a it was like doing a Terminator movie and being Schwarzenegger for the first time. You have like sixteen words you say. Most of our words were. And how old were you at this point? Okay, eight. Uh huh. Okay. How old are you now? Fourteen. Story is good. Okay. <laughs> so no, her story is awesome. That's one of my favorite, favorite hands down interviews because yeah. I was so like tuned in. Oh, yeah, I was like, oh, man, I just want to keep going. I want to hear more. Yeah. Even though we literally heard, we heard her whole life, mm-hmm. and it's still going like stronger than ever. So it's like, damn, man, that was a good episode. So just wicked, to put wicked inspirational, just to put that out into the universe, definitely a a dream episode for their. Yes, happen. Palmer, because we know you're listening. We know you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> nope, that ain't happening, dude. You know what I really love to do? What's up? And I'd even be willing to. I'll sign whatever NDA I have to sign. Okay. <laughs> Just spend one day from eyes open to eyes closed with someone like Palmer. Like, I'm, I can't even imagine. Right. That I, and I know my limits. I'm not saying like Elon Musk, right? Because we all know, dude, that motherfucker's going to get up at like four in the morning and you're going to work till like two in the morning. And he's going to be doing 18 million different things. And I have this weird feeling that, you know, Palmer, like he's not sleeping till 11. And the guy, the dude, the guy... <laughs> restarted the vr push and modern day vr push as a teenager what and kind of stress level in your life man gets outed by Jesus. all of tech tech for really just stupid political stuff and i then, think it just made him stronger at the end of, but again I, well, I was gonna say save it for the interview just and doesn't let that stops and build himself back up and has a, a hugely successful company you know so i agree i, I don't think that's somebody that that stops. Right? But but how fun would that be though? Too much. So one one or two more, then we'll take a, a quick ad break. A game that you you've been a love loving this one actually. VR Rider. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's V R I D E R. I'm guessing it's supposed to be VR Rider. But it's available now on App Lab for twenty bucks. But there's a full release, a full store release coming to the official MetaQuest store in June of this year. And it's a racing game. Motorcycle. Motorcycle game in VR with officially licensed mor- motorcycles. Some pretty big names as well on there, too. Yeah, man. This is like... I'm so happy to see a motorcycle game come into the VR space. Well, they, and they're, they're doing it right. You know, it's like... They even make you put your arms out like a motorcycle. hmm I thought of the, after playing it for a while, I was like, man, need one of those chairs that's got like the one peg... I hope someone makes this. <laughs> I really do. Like it's a one peg chair mm-hmm. centered in uh, the bottom of where your butt goes. Mm-hmm. And then have like the artificial arch for the gas tank. Cause mm-hmm. these are sport bikes. These are, you know, like true racing bikes. So it's got that massive tank and you can almost feel it hitting your chest when you're playing it. It's so stupid. And then you hold your arms out. So if it had the, a way to have your controllers locked in there, like real motorcycle mm-hmm. handles, or even down at the angle. So you're just not free holding your arms up for so long? Yeah, I mean, you can do it. Like cause some racing bikes have it at like that 45, 45 down here, mm-hmm. which I don't re- like as much as the traditional handlebar. But I could, I could see how that could get tiring after a while. Yeah. If you don't have something like supporting your well, arms up. Well, and you're tense because you're fucking racing. And you're immersed. Dude, it's it's such a good game. Yeah. And then you, you lean into the corners, and when you get close to the ground, you hear that... You hear the the wind change, so I'm like, man, right these now, guys are doing fucking amazing with this. Right now, it's single player, but I hope mm-hmm. that there's plans for multiplayer because it's got to be. It, I'll bet on it. A racing game like totally this, bet on it. It's made for multiplayer. Ideally, if they could get like twelve to fifteen, yeah, do a full race of. Yep. Hell yeah, yep. that's the Grid goal. Legends that shit. Yeah. That's the thing. Grid Legends wasn't the best graphically by anything, but they had a good gameplay base. And they had those features. I those. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I forgave some of the graphics. I mean, I didn't like score it high because of them, but no, I, I wasn't. I was just happy to see VR racing. And this is, and just like, you know, car racing, there's going to be a learning curve to to driving these bikes because you can't go whipping in the car. <laughs> you just can't. So you have to learn to. <laughs> 
You need to be learning to ride that <laughs> motorcycle and lean lean hard into the corners. Yeah. So it's cool to see these games finally coming to VR as well, especially mm-hmm. polished with officially licensed Someone's motorcycles be the and first, so. brands and at least for standalone. So. I don't have any other motors. I want to see motocross come in though, where you can be taking the big ass jumps and. Mm-hmm. Right now, the store page says version 0.6. So let's see by June on the the official MetaQuest store, the full store. But right now, an App Lab for 20 bucks. I'd say this one's a good investment. I would jump on it. I don't know what the difference is going to be of the, the current version versus the store, ver- the official store if release. It can, if they can only get better, difference. which I'll assume is going to be the case, mm-hmm. I'll actually assume multiplayer will come out of somebody's mouth from the studio some some point because there's no way. For sustainability reasons, if this is multiplayer, you could, you could, you know, it's years of content. Correct. So that, that would be my bet, but I'd, I'd pounce on that, especially if, you know, are they going up in price or are they going to keep it the same? I don't know. We, we got to get them on for an interview or something to find out. I got, I got a bunch of questions. There's a market for it. There's a big market. I have, I have everything about this game. I pounced on it. We, we we had early access. Yeah. Full disclosure, if I remember correctly. And that was a no-brainer. Yeah, right away. Yep. Everything about this game says to me it's going to be a hit. It just it has it that feel with, to it. It will with racing fans. Mm-hmm. You know, just There's like a market if, for that. Just like if NASCAR came out with a true NASCAR game, mm-hmm. holy shit, people would lose their minds. Especially if it was multiplayer, you know, yeah. NASCAR racing with pit stops. Well, this one's got the the writing on the wall. It's already getting the officially Your buddies licensed. in the pit crew. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, dude! You could take that to such depth. Let's we'll get go. there. But I think this one's going to be a hit. So an- another game, too, that existed on, on PC VR before, VR Skater. It's out now on the Quest and Pico, actually, to be fair, mm-hmm. for twenty four ninety nine. It's called v- VR Skater. It's literally like a little hand skating game. You use your controllers. I haven't hopped in it yet, so I only can see videos. I'm always like, how the hell does this work? Because I see videos of it, and you see the two floating controllers, and then you see the skateboard right down there and you use the controllers to do flips and tricks and skate. So interesting concept. It's cool is they even have you choose your skateboard style. Mm -hmm. So it's you you doing traditional or you doing goofy. You know what you can say about it? It's unique. There's not another game like this. No. In all of VR. So props. We know the Tony Hawk franchise is, is the bread and butter for skating games. So I'm sure they're looking Mm-hmm. It made me think, like, imagine a fingerboard game with hand tracking. You laughed at it. You're yeah, like, come I on, man. You know, you use, like, two fingers nah, with hand tracking. And you... I was scared by looking at the preview that this was what this game was going to be. And then during the tutorial when they're like, that's well, all you've done so you far, move, too. This is right? how you move forward. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can I can handle this. So I haven't played it yet, but what just doing that little bit in the tutorial, feel like there's some potential to it? Yeah. They do it good? So far. Because I was skeptical when I saw the video, but I'm like, everybody says that they love it. It looks it looks yeah, good. I just got to get into it and play it. Mm-hmm. It looks like one of those games that once you get the feel of it, you can probably just do some crazy shit. Be cool if they have broken bones. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe they do. <laughs> so let's see. Props to that, though. I, I always wanted that on standalone VR. And here it is on both the Quest and Pico, twenty four ninety nine. skiing game would be nice. Yeah, that's, a, that's inevitable. Remember there was that one on uh, Browser... VR, well, you, it was like an avalanche one, and you put the controllers on your feet way back in the day. Do you, do you remember oh this? Oh, my God. And yes. you go downhill? Yes. We had that. that. <laughs> we well, had that it was game. just It was on a browser. You just go on there on your Oculus browser. Yes. I remember that. You remember that? If I remember, it wasn't the worst. It was around the time that it we experimented just... with Brushworks VR, which was another yep. browser one. Yeah, man. I forgot all about that. You so. put it on your feet? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, but I could totally see how a, a downhill skiing one would work, though, with your, you know, well, cross country for yeah. sure. Yeah, because you'd use the mm-hmm. gorilla tag movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like currently popular. Yeah, I mean, somebody. I hope somebody knows whatever web app we're talking about. But none, nonetheless, I remember that. Yeah, a game that we <laughs> both love, Toy Trains VR. They're getting a, a new update on April eighteenth. That's bringing not only new gameplay levels but also a, an endless sandbox mode as That's well. That's pretty cool. For a game like Toy Train, sandbox, it's made for sandbox. I actually thought conceptually that's what it was going to be. And then it was all level-based like, and mission-based. Oh, I have to 
actually do shit. It's the <laughs> opposite. You would think it launched with the sandbox, then missions yeah. came after. But it's cool that not I only... I love Toy Train, so it's cool. Yeah, really good game. And it's cool that they didn't only just launch, you know, the sandbox mode, but they also added new levels for the people that love that aspect of the game. So, cool stuff. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. And if, if, you know, you haven't checked it out yet... I haven't finished it, but I enjoy it. Updates are good for games. It brings them back into the the new cycle a little bit. You know, there's so many releases, some some games get buried a, li- a bit, and I think Toy Trains is one that a lot of people would enjoy, but not maybe not everybody's checked out yet. And this new update on April 18th with the sandbox mode, just another reason to go hop in. So then one more, and then we'll take a, an ad break, then we'll come back with the rest of them. A game that was announced next last week from a studio called Clap Hans, Ultimate Swing Golf. It's coming out on May 16th on the MetaQuest for twenty twenty nine ninety nine, And the studio Clap Hans apparently have made some pre-existing golf games in the past that have been pretty popular as well. But they're coming to the MetaQuest with this one. This with, looks fun. It looks good. I, I said it to you during the, the trailer when we were watching it. I'm like, it looks good, but golf is a tough market to break into. In VR, between Golf Plus capturing the real golf, elements so so good and walk about hitting that mini golf this one looks like it's more we- real golf than mini golf but it looks i don't want to say arcadey but it doesn't look as focused on realism as golf plus maybe i just have the wrong i think the golf physics will be and i know what you're saying with like natural setting and all that stuff but there's there's room for this <laughs> so it's not rhythm based so the market's not that saturated. <laughs> no. And it, is it, there room for another fun golf game? Absolutely. It looked like it used the Quest avatars as well. Yeah, that I'm curious about. I couldn't tell for sure. Mm-hmm. It looked like it, though. Yeah, it but looked like it, but I'm not 100%. I do like the studio name, Clap Hans. Clap Hans. Clap Hans. Clap on. Because it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be a Clap Hands, yeah. but Clap Hans. Clap Hans. <laughs> German company. <laughs> Too funny. What studio is it? Clap Hans. Oh, no, I'm mean, where they're from. Oh, I don't know. I wonder if it's, it is like a European thing. <laughs> like, you're asking me the name? I, we were just joking about it. Clap Hans. No, that, that. Yeah, I was down here in Mississippi. It sounds like Dutch or something like that, but. Hans. That sounds like something that some dudes from Georgia would do as a joke as well, too. So I, who knows? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Al's got them peaches down here. <laughs> got some so, lovely Georgia peaches. So I said that would be the last one before we take an ad break, but nonetheless, Ultimate Swing Golf from Clap Hans coming yeah, May 16th dude, I can't for twenty nine ninety nine. I cannot wait to play it, though. Yeah, I'm excited. May 16th, that's one month away. That's crazy. It reminds me of a golf game I used to play. Mm-hmm. That was pretty fucking fun. A little bit more playful style, right? If we're thinking of the same game. Yeah. And it, it might have been a little forgiving with the holes too. So if it's mm-hmm. if it's similar, we're the same one. I'll be excited. So, you know, right before we take an ad break, you know, I'll give a shout out to our Patreon supporters on an on air on our on our on air shout out tier, and I'll plug our Discord server and the YouTube and subscribe like always too. But right before that, I do want to give a shout out to Toast Interactive. They sent us this nice gift box with stuff. You see me rocking the Max Mustard. Max Mustard. Shirt. You know, I always joke in our Discord, I go, Max Mustard, that funky mustard. And I'm saying it like Beastie Boys, Brass Monkey. But I feel like because it's text mm-hmm. and I'm just writing it in the Discord, nobody has ever responded to me saying it. I'm like, I know you all have heard Brass Monkey by Beastie Boys. so Maybe nobody likes it. No, probably not. But that's what I think <laughs> of now whenever I hear, whenever I see Max Mustard, I'm like, Max Mustard. That funky mustard. That funky mustard. Imagine if you booted into the game and that's what what blasted on the the start menu. Max Shake me mustard. too hard, you'll see my custard. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, they sent us this nice gift basket <laughs> with with some stuff. You know, you're uh, gonna think that every <laughs> fucking time, dude. You there's say so it much now. potential for it. I hope, I hope, I hope they capitalize it on it a little bit. But nonetheless, Max you know, mustard. Boom, chicka, pow, pow. <laughs> Max Boom, Mustard. Chicka, pow. So much potential with the branding of that game. Yeah. But in the okay. the nice little stuff they Focus. sent us, we'll get, we'll get we'll get down to the business. 
Came with this nice little t-shirt, Max Mustard shirt. I'm a sucker for a good shirt. But you mm-hmm. want to grab the tote bag? It came with a sick tote bag, reusable bag, which this sounds silly. I use reusable bags and stuff like that. This is a good quality reusable bag. Yeah. It's like really good quality. It is. It's like very nicely made. There's no jank in this. In this, there's like a, a poster. 3D poster. That's a 3D poster. It comes with 3D glasses. Old school. As well. It's it's freaking awesome. Should I open it or? No. Or no, it's too much to to then roll it's up. Too and much stuff. for the the camera, the camera as well. To yeah, that's true too. All the high hieroglyphic looking stuff. So a nice poster. They also sent a nice postcard with some, you know, a nice letter as well as some trading cards. Mm-hmm. And as well, I'm a sucker for. And Max Mustard is one of them. Yeah. Look at these. Boom. These are freaking cool. I think that's it, right? Yep. So nice t-shirt, a poster, and some nice trading cards. So huge thank you to Toast Interactive for spreading some love to yeah. us for Max Mustard, a game that has been so well Dropping received. Dropping that mustard custard on us. <laughs> now that's in my head so much. But dude, they, <laughs> tell me there's not potential with a, a parody of Brass Monkey focused on Max Mustard. Yeah, why not? Total potential. But this game, at the longer it's out, I keep seeing more and more rave reviews about it. People are loving themselves some Max when Mustard. They play it, it, they, it's fun, you know? It's like... Classic platformer. Correct. Unique level you, design. Gives you a little nostalgic feel. Good story. With modern technology. So Unlocks, cool. upgrades. Let's go. Huge, great work from Toast Interactive with a totally different game than their first game as well. With Richie's Blank Experience, a game mm-hmm. that's still going viral. But now they got a great IP under their hands. Homemade with Max Mustard. So again, huge shout out to our, our Patreon supporters on our on-air shout out tier. As always, we have a sim. Amelia, Earth Witness, Carson, Generic Vibes, TP, Jake, Crispy, and Shoes. These are people that have enjoyed the podcast so much they decided to not only join the, the Patreon, but the tier that gives a nice little on-air shout-out. I, I can't thank you all enough for your continued support, as well as the listeners that tune in week after week. You can also join that Patreon tier simply by visiting the link in our show notes, clicking Patreon, and then going there. We can also as well join our Discord server, which is an awesome community of a whole bunch of VR peeps, VR consumers, VR media peeps, content creators. We've got some game developers in there. We have awesome game meetups. We have book discussion, movie discussion, music discussion, food pictures, pet pictures, and obviously a whole bunch of VR discussion. So go join the Rough Talk VR Discord. If you're a fan of the show, engage with other listeners, play some walkabout mini golf, synth riders, all that cool stuff. As well, if you join the Patreon, you get access to a exclusive channel in our Discord server that's exclusive for Patreon peoples. So as the Discord continues to grow, that's going to become the coolest serve or coolest channel in the server, if you ask me. So as always, too, uh, if you enjoy the podcast. Subscribe, rate us five stars on whatever podcast platform that is, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Addict, whatever. If it's a YouTube, don't forget, smash that like button. Just saying. And then other than that, anything you want to say? Mm. Well, then we'll be back with you after a message from these sponsors. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the code word ROUGHTALKVR for 20% off plus free shipping. After using Manscaped, I can finally say I have caught the spring fever. Introducing the season's champ, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. Hate making a mess? Not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, or in the ocean. Spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions. 
Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit plus Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word ROUGHTALKVR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code word ROUGHTALKVR at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. And we are back. And again on the news of game updates, Power Wash Sim VR, they're getting a SpongeBob SquarePants Bikini Bottom DLC, which is quite the collaborative collaboration right there. And it's coming, SpongeBob, yeah. <laughs> coming to, to Power Wash Sim VR. Dude, we're going to have some sort of SpongeBob franchising in VR. Well, what's cool is they're willing to bring shit in. So mm -hmm. if you're buying the game, at least you have the hopes that there's more DLC coming. They'll be different. And they're obviously not scared to go off make-believe shit either. So SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. Uh, so unexpected. Yeah, it's a weird one. <laughs> it looks fun, though. It I does. Mean, I, 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 like I got to hop in. Them, so it's like, I don't care what they give you. I'm I'm on it. Mm -hmm. I got to hop into it's this It's dirty. One. I'm going to clean it. Give me my power washer. SpongeBob SquarePants DLC and Power yeah, Wash. I've never VR. been in SpongeBob World. Well, now you can. In That's going to be the cool thing. Seen quite like, a few episodes in my lifetime with you gonna, and your sister, but you're going to see SpongeBob's pineapple home in VR. You're going to have to clean it. Come on, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Probably clean the crusty crab or something like that. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to show the iconic characters in the background or something. You got to. You got to give some sort. But let's see. Give Sponge SpongeBob a bath. And then also related to Power Wash Sim VR, the studio behind it, Future Lab, they were purchased by Miniclip, which I'm pretty sure is the same Miniclip that ran Flash a Flash game website that I used to play all the Back time. In the day. Maybe sometimes during school, maybe sometimes at home. But you know, to me, there were my top three Flash game websites mm. were AddictingGames.com, Newgrounds. And mini clip. And I haven't heard of mini clip since like sixth grade, you know, <laughs> seventh grade. So to see them now all of a sudden in the news buying the studio behind Power Wash Sim VR, that was, uh, that wins my unexpected news of the week award for sure. Now, I wouldn't have I, predicted it. I don't know what they've been Left doing. Field shit. I didn't know they had the funds to buy it. I mean, I got to imagine the studio behind Power Wash Sim is successful, right? I mean, as a yeah, <laughs> you would think. I don't. Yeah, I don't think they're losing money, and apparently they're keeping the same like leadership in charge of yeah, it and stuff. The teams not, will all stay the same. They're not just like cutting everyone, owner. and yeah, it's just now it's owned by MiniClip. It was like such an unexpected name, and technically they're in the VR world now. So interesting. Be interesting from, to see what happens from Flash games to VR. They should be calling Ben Olding right now. Going, let's talk. <laughs> I bet there's you a lot of there's a lot of former. I wonder if he ever flash, published flash game devs mm -hmm. in VR. So I wonder he's one of them, mm -hmm. uh, the developer of Jack Kung Dragon Fist Kung Fu VR. I wonder if if he ever published anything to Mini Clip. So two pieces of news related to Power Wash Sim, both extremely unexpected. SpongeBob SquarePants Sponge DLC, Bob. and then the studio behind them getting bought both yeah. in the same week. Okay, was not expecting that, but carrying on. And then this was actually some news that we missed the past week, but the next update of the Quest version 64, it's mainly for the Quest 3. It's going to bring in improved mixed reality, like graphics, you know, visuals, and it's also going to allow access for external mics on the Quest 3. Before, there was no way to use a different mic natively on your Quest 3. So you're you're restricted to the the mic on the headset, which really isn't the worst mic. Yeah, I don't know how they're doing that. What do you mean? Like how how you're going to be able to use the external? Well, they had they actually went out of their way to disable the ability to before. Yeah, so I'm just curious. I'm, I, like, I can't wait. You're going to plug it, it in, probably to the USB C slot. I'm sure there's USB C mics, or you'll do it in the headset, the auxiliary one. Yeah, but isn't that an out only? I think it's an, I'm pretty sure it's an in and out that via There's software no. was only an yeah, out. So I'm curious. So I'm, I'm excited for the past. But I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Because I, 
not that the pass through is bad, but if it's going to like tighten up some of the, mm-hmm. the waviness or whatever, then I'm, you know, and yeah. I can sign on to my phone with pass through. It's just not a hundred percent crystal clear all the time. You mean like look at your phone screen and yeah, and do, do stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say it's important to note this, that meta does both rolling updates and rolling features. So meaning when you get the newest update, you're not going to, not everybody's going to get it at the same time. No, they're rolling it out. Yes. And beyond that, when you get the update, they also roll out the new features to the update. So you might get the update. And not the feature. Yes. yes. That's crazy. I understand the rolling updates. But yeah, then no, they're I rolling. get it. Because if some people get it and they're like, they're like then there's, there's bugs no, and then there's. Well, I don't see any improvement or whatever. It's like, because it you don't have the feature yet to go with the update. But, Correct. So. Yeah. It just happens. something for people to keep in mind. It's not only... It's not a guarantee. Yeah. You got to wait for your turn to get the update, and you got to wait for your turn to get the features sometimes included in the update as well. Or you download the update and you have it all good to go. It's just the way it goes. So more game update news. Among Us VR from Shell Games, which I, I do want to pause real quick and say that last week I said that we didn't have a price yet on Silent Slayer which was factually incorrect. That was a misstatement from me. In fact, we have Silent Slayer is available for pre-order right now for 10% off the base price of $19.99, so you can get it for pre-order for right now for $17.99. I just wanted to correct myself. Since we're talking about a Shell Games yeah. game now, you know, it felt, felt appropriate. But Among Us VR from Shell Games, a couple months ago they did a limited, limited time event that was pretty fun. And it looks like they're continuing with that trend with a new limited time event. It's an infection event that pits chefs against what they call zomburritos, which already has me laughing. Mm-hmm. And this one actually sounds pretty cool. It breaks breaks you into two teams. So you have chefs who they have to, their goal is to complete 10 tasks. If they complete 10 tasks, they win. The zomburritos, their goal is to infect the chefs. And unlike classic Among Us, where you know you have to find who the imposter is, somebody gets killed, now they're a ghost. If a zombrito infects a chef, they become a zombrito. So it's a race between the zombritos to infect all the chefs and the chefs to complete ten tasks. Where it's right away you went, dude, that's that's going to be hard for the chefs. Well, I what has the without just having, on on concept without having tried it. Um, I'm just curious, like, why couldn't the the Zomburritos just bum rush? That's what your brain went to. But like, I'm thinking there's going to be something that allows them to move or something. Maybe the vents. Allows who to move? The chefs. Like, allows them to move in a way that zombies can't. Yeah, I don't know. Zom- Although, sorry, otherwise, I just, if it's five Zomburritos. on... Let's say it's five on five. It's like, well, if you know you're a Zomburrito, just fucking bum rush Mm -hmm. you know and touch and do whatever but i'm thinking there must be something that prevents you from just doing that Mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting if there's like it's maybe you have to you have to do a task first and then you can so i don't know i've got a lot of questions with this one i have a feeling obviously the more chefs you grab the easier it gets for the zombrito right maybe they only start you with one or two zombritos against eight chefs dude if so I'm I'm a zombrito and you're a chef and we go into the server. I'm gonna instantly smack you. Maybe right? we start way away from each other. I don't know. Lots of questions. But this one does sound fun. Yeah, this on, one sounds on real paper, cool. I was like, all right, I just I have to know. So, mm-hmm. and I trust Shell Games. So yeah, I love <laughs> they Shell. Don't disappoint. No, I was upset they took away the the last little feature. I was like, man, that was that was a cool one. Well, you know when like. Food companies, they do a bunch of limited time chips. And they, the then, they, chip. then, then they all go away. And then, but it's then, not the, a chip. But then the best received of them comes back. You know, that might be what they're doing is they're just testing a bunch of different game modes. They're just doing whatever they want. And maybe the best <laughs> one comes, you know. I don't know. I don't want to slander any chip companies. My friend came over with a bag of chips mm-hmm. from a big name chip company that was like honey. Sweet and honeyer. It was it was just disgusting. It was like one of their like test experimental flavors that they put out. You know, when they're always like, oh, you know, new. new oh my god, it was vile. Mm. It was absolutely disgusting. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm usually not a fan. I'd rather a ketchup chip. When people, when these companies start thinking outside the box of what tastes good. And that's the worst part is like. Oh my God, it was, I don't even know. They would have had to have beta tested it with consumers to like, hey, try this and we want your feedback. So how many of those people that try these products aren't honest? Six different people tried it without seeing the other person's reaction. And hated it? Yes. Yeah. All went, what the fuck is that? I get it. <laughs> no, I totally get it. So that was the, I could have done the taste testing for him. I did it last night. It was gross. You didn't need to put it in stores. Six out of six hated it. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yep. Not in this market. Not in this geographic. Maybe, maybe. Isn't that funny how sometimes some. Well, that's the thing too. It's some like, regional area. They might love that in the South, Southwest, you know? Fried okra is huge down in South. Yeah. So. But yet, you can only find it in a couple of restaurants. Here there. in Massachusetts, six out of six hated that shit. I'll tell you that. So other get that crap out of here. <laughs> other <laughs> other news: a, a game that was featured at the Rough Talk VR Gaming Showcase. Stay tuned for next year's as well. I'm excited to start the planning of that. You know, sooner rather than later. It's a new hand uh, a game, Masters of Light VR. It's a new hand tracking adventure game. It's coming out in May of this year with a pre order available now. Same price as Silent Slayer, nineteen ninety nine. Or you can pre-order it now with 10% off. Brings it down to $17.99. It's a hand-tracking adventure game featuring 36 different levels, you know, three different difficulties, some trophies to unlock, a bunch of different gameplay elements to it. It looks like some punching, some... Oh, I don't even know. A whole bunch of shit, right? It looked like You're every level... do stuff. Every level looked a little bit different from what they were showing. It looked like, at, like I said, at one point it looked like some rhythm punching... At some point, more like touching stuff at the right time. Some puzzle elements. It was hard to put a exact, you know, touch on it, but it it looks like there's a lot of potential to it. I'm anxious to try it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of games that I don't feel videos do the justice do the of justice it. of what the actual gameplay is or like what you're you should. I mean, they don't do a bad job with it, but no. it looks like one of those. Well, a it's hand tracking, so right off the bat, I'm gonna have to know firsthand. How good it is. Yeah. It's like... This okay. one needs a 10-minute deep dive to do justice to explain, you know? Like, I don't know. Like a video... You remember how the showcase uh, for Shell Game, like over the Rough Talk VR Gaming Showcase, ended with Shell Games explaining everything about Silent Slayer? Yeah. Masters of Light needs one of those. Yeah. Like because I got a bunch of questions. Developer. Yeah, I get it. So, but I'm excited for this one. And then another one, uh, Township... Or the developers of Township Tale, Alta, the studio, they announced that they have a new project that they're calling creatively Project 2. Obviously. The Dungeons of Eternity? Yeah. Project 2, that's not going to be the final name by any means, but it's going to be what looks like a multiplayer dungeon crawler. And so far, they just posted one video. But in that video, they said that they're going to be posting weekly videos on their YouTube channel documenting the development process. So I'm all I you la you joked Dungeons of Eternity. Mm -hmm. I'm down for a good multiplayer dungeon crawler. There's only one really good co-op one on the store right now on the MetaQuest store, and that's Dungeons of Eternity. Mm -hmm. I'm down for another. Bring it. So mm -hmm. I'm down for I'm down for another if they bring something of their you, own to the table. Yeah, their own flavor to it. And what scares me a little is on the video I saw. I think it was I, a clone didn't see much of a difference. Now mm -hmm. we're talking early shit. Oh my so, goodness, so early. Even yeah, the Avatar yeah, yeah, models yeah, yeah, yeah. were... I just want them... Like running around in under undies. It's like if there's some peace of mind that like this is going to differ like this, mm -hmm. then uh-oh. I, I got faith it's going to be its own unique thing. Yeah. But let's see. Dude, we, just, we even... We'll be keeping our eye on it for sure. We still go into a Dungeons of Eternity and have a great yeah. time. I love it. Find a good dungeon, save it, you know. We had a, some freaking hilarious moments with accidentally dying, both at the same time the other week. Just a good game that holds up. So it won our, our game of the year mm -hmm. last year. And for good reason. Even now, we're still able to go into it and have a good time. So if whatever Project 2 is going to be named from Alta, if it delivers, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited to check it out, though. And then just a couple more pieces of news. There's been rumors of Google working on some AR stuff or some VR devices, something upcoming Android based in the XR world. And they, they confirmed that they have some AR announcements coming in May. So let's see. 
that doesn't mean their hardware is going to release in May, but it looks like that the the whatever they they're working on is going to be officially announced. I'm excited. We shall see. I'm curious pricing, specs, whole bunch of whole bunch of questions. When follow through will be very important with me with Google, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, I am so skeptical of Google. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a tough one to bite into. And it's not that I'm a Google hater. It's just, I mean, killed by Google is a real thing. Just a Google Google history. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if they make a hit product and the products that they stick with, I mean, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Maps, Gmail, Google Search, which has actually gone somehow. I didn't think that they could do it, but hasn't really been as good (laughs) recently. But the Google products that deliver, they don't kill. But sometimes there's really good Google products and they do get killed. So exactly what you said. We'll see where their AR stuff is in 2025, but looks like that they're going to be announcing some stuff next month. So that's cool. And then last piece of news before I plug Toy toy Monsters a bit, because I always got to do that. Real VR Fishing, they announced that they hit nearly 1 million users. That doesn't mm. mean a million users actively at the same time. No, a million but people overall. Now, that's, now serving. That's pretty cool. I love real the VR mark fishing. Is pretty good, mm-hmm. and they didn't say that they passed it yet. They said they're nearly at a million, but they're definitely going to hit it, especially as more VR users, you know, they get headsets. I feel like that that's one that might get missed by newer VR users. That was a big deal when we first got our Quest Twos. That was like a game at the top of everybody's "you gotta get" list. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it still gets that same love, despite being a game that holds up strong mm. in twenty twenty four. So if you're a fishing fan, I think real VR fishing is like, that's the cream of the crop. That's peak. They did a great job with it. So million active or million users, that's cool stuff. And then lastly, last week, Toy Monsters did officially drop on the official MetaQuest store. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't grabbed it yet, you like plants versus zombies, you like a good tower defense game, dude, Toy Monsters, go grab it. Game that I highly recommend. The developer. Oh, definitely. I liked it when... It was in beta, more or mm-hmm. less. On the very early access. Yeah. It's a lot different now. It's gotten so much better. So much more content. Made by a solo yeah. dev, too. Really cute, yep. cute artwork. So much fun. So, you know, I've been plugging it the last couple of weeks, but it's officially out now on the, the MetaQuest store. Go support uh, a great solo dev. Go check out Toy Monsters VR if you haven't yet. So that's all I got for VR news. You know. Anything else that, that you heard in the week that, that you oh, want to talk about? Pretty much covers it. Yeah, this was a this was a good episode. A lot on the agenda this week. Fun stuff in the Twitter land of VR with the arguments and stuff like that. The Rough Talk VR Discord been great as always. Patreon growing, YouTube growing. So close to PC VR. We're shopping at this point. We are shopping. I mean, like we have a great discussion thread going in our Discord with like pre built options. Right now, we're even leaning towards having Micro Center and Cambridge build one for us and driving our asses to Cambridge mm. on a road trip to go pick up two. But that's, we're, we're there. That's where we're at. So like we're, we're shopping. And TP, he's on our Patreon list. TPZ, our boy TPZ. I'm going to do something rare while you're holding the mic. I'm going to go use the bathroom. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Too I'll, much I'll, coffee. I'll just wrap it up right after this. I'll say he did a great job, you know, putting together oh a Micro God. Center pre-built so huge props to the rough talk vr discord that i always plug for really going above and beyond not only in supporting us in getting pc vr but also supporting us in the final touches of actually what to get so with all that being said if you enjoy the podcast subscribe rate us five stars smash that like button on youtube if you're really a big fan of the show go join the, the discord if you're an even bigger fan of the show go join the patreon And we'll check you out on Wednesday for a great interview with a producer of an upcoming VR game, Arcade Paradise. So check you out then. Ciao, ciao.